Good morning and welcome to Plugged into Long Island on 102.3 WBAB and 106.1 BLI. I'm Al Levine and we're here today with Dale Flashner, a Delphi graphic art professor and co-founder of Creative Cups. Good morning, Dale. Good morning, Al. Hillary Rudder, executive director of the Delphi New York Statewide Breast Cancer Hotline and the Support Program. Good morning, Hillary. Good morning, Al. And Roseanne Spinner, breast cancer survivor and Creative Cups contributor. Hi, Roseanne. Good morning, Al. Let's talk with Dale first. Tell us, what is Creative Cups? Well, Creative Cups is a most unique fundraiser, and it's an opportunity for people to express themselves using a plain bra as a canvas, if you will, and tell their story, tell their personal story about um, their experiences with breast cancer, tell their story just because they want to be a part of this wonderful event. It actually becomes an exhibition, if you will, of stories of these wonderful bra makers, if you will. And we celebrate them on March 16th at Adelphi University um, from 7 to 9. And it's a, as I said, it's just the most unique, light-spirited, wonderful way to raise awareness about breast cancer. So I hope you'll all join us. So how does this idea get started? Obviously, we know the the cause, the you know the reason for uh, designing these, but how did it all get started? Well, I, I had two friends that were actually going through double mastectomies, and I, I really wanted to do something. And a former student of mine uh, had discussed a similar type of event that she had attended. And um, as a director of the graphic design program at Adelphi, I'm sitting in this art department filled with talent. I had my wonderful friendship with Hillary Rudder, director of the Breast Cancer Hotline at Adelphi, and I thought, okay, this is a perfect marriage. We can take the talent of the art department and put it together with the resources and services of the hotline, and we're going to do this fundraiser. And that was the beginning, and that was in 2009, and we've been doing it ever since, every two years, and that takes us to 2017. Great. Great story. And uh, looking at some of the pictures here of some of the bras you guys have created, these are amazing. Tell us uh, about some of these creative cups that will be auctioned on March 16th. You know, Al, it's really interesting. Every bra is a story, and I would encourage everybody to come and see them because... They're they're works of art? They are individual works of art. And I must say, we've done this, as I mentioned, for uh, since 2009. This is probably the best showcasing of Creative Cups that we've done in craftsmanship, in stories, in poignancy about these stories. And they really are very special. So it can go from, for instance, we have one bra maker who actually took the diagnoses, the pieces of paper from people's cancer uh, uh, medical bills Mm -hmm. or letters from their doctor, she turned it all into pulp and then repurposed these sad pieces of paper into this beautifully magnificent creative cup. That's great. So it's 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 really something that you you have to see for yourself to understand what people have transformed these ordinary garments into. This is like when life gives you lemons, you make lemonade. Absolutely. And who are these? some of these people who've made the Creative Cups? Tell me more about them. Well, it, uh, we, it's a compilation of people. It's people living all across our island as well as in the tri-state area. We've had some people that have shipped them up from Florida and, and different locations. Uh, we've had a lot of faculty, administration, and staff from Adelphi University, as well as the hotline members and uh, people of the uh, that work for the Breast Cancer Hotline. We've had young kids um, as young as nine. So we've had men. We have a. Um, it's just it, it it ranges. There's I I wouldn't know how to really describe who the bra makers are. Right. There's a lot of them. A lot of them. Great. So what exactly is happening? There's an event on March 16th. Tell me about that. So the event on March 16th is again a. Um, really wonderful celebration of these works of art and the people that have made them and contributed to making Creative Cups the success that it is. And um, we will be having a, it's it's an auction and uh, reception. So there will be desserts, there will be some wine, and um, it will be an opportunity for people to walk around and bid. And it's our way of fundraising and keeping the 
unbelievable hotline going. And um, so all the money that we raise from the um, sale of the uh, of the Creative Cups will be going to that. And we have featured a coffee table book. So every bra maker uh, had their piece photographed with their personal stories, and that coffee table book will be on sale at the event. Terrific. So it's March 16th, and That's where is it? It's going to be in the Ruth S. Harley University Center uh, at Adelphi University in the ballroom, and it will be showcasing 138 incredible works of art wow. that we call Creative Cups. Turning this place into a museum of, uh, of natural art. <laughs> you could say that. <laughs> um, okay, uh, so... Roseanne, tell us your story. She, Roseanne, is a breast cancer survivor and Creative Cups contributor. Uh, yes, I'm very pleased to be here. And as a matter of fact, as a breast cancer survivor, I'm pleased to be anywhere, to be sure. Mm-hmm. <laughs> we'll go back to uh, June of 1997. I became engaged to my husband, Eric, and uh, we planned a December wedding. So we had a six-month window to get everything done. And I guess that most of all of that falls on the bride-to-be and back in those days, I didn't have an iPhone to keep keep a journal of events, of things that I had to do. So I had a five by seven write-in diary. And by the time we got to the November, the beginning of November, there was not an empty spot on the page. Every, I wrote down so many things to recheck, redo, this and that. And all of a sudden, it was in the beginning of November, I saw on the page, gynecologist annual appointment on, I think it was November 5th. And the following day was my annual mammogram appointment. And I said to my fiancé, I think we're going to push this to the spring. And he said, oh, don't do that. You know your mom's history. You know your family history. So I listened to him, and I went for my appointment with the gynecologist. And that went very well. And uh, physical examination went very well. And he said, this is great. I don't find any problems. And I certainly didn't detect any problems. So I was happy, and I went home. And then the next day, I went for my mammogram. And late in the afternoon that day, I got a call from the doctor, the, 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 the doctor I had just seen the day before. Mm-hmm. And I thought he had a, a cold. He sounded so different. I later found out he was actually crying. And he, um, he said, we need to, we saw something suspicious, so we need to have you come in for another mammogram and more tests and biopsy, et cetera. And my heart sunk. Mm. I very quickly, he assigned a surgeon to me. I said, can we, can we do this? Can we put this off until after I'm getting married on December 7th? Can we put this off? And everyone told me no. So I canceled, we canceled the honeymoon. I went to the surgeon's office with a picture of my wedding gown. I said, I don't know how I'm going to do this. Our wedding is December 7th and I have a strapless gown. I, I won't, I don't know how I'm going to be able to pull this off. And he thanked me for coming in and bringing him a picture of the dress. He said, thank you. Now I know how I'm going to proceed. I'm going to go in from below, and there won't be a scar showing on, with that dress. Don't worry. So that's what ended up happening. Uh, my surgery, and it was cancer indeed, um, was uh, two weeks before my wedding day. Um, when I woke up, I saw that I was bruised from, totally bruised, my torso from my waist all the way up, all the way up my neck. Only my face wasn't bruised. Mm. And now I said, oh, no, what am I going to do? I have this strapless dress. I don't have a scar showing, but I have all these bruises. Right. And I quickly found a seamstress. I had about 13 days to go who made me a shawl so that I said, okay, I'll I'll get through this with this shawl. So now the countdown was all of these days till the wedding, bruises every day, not dissipating at all, until the morning of December 7th, which was my wedding day, zero bruises. They just disappeared that morning? Overnight miracle. Wow. From the day before, from the 14 days of solid bruises. So I called myself that day and every day since one grateful bride. I had, a, I had a celebration in the year 2000 called a millennium. I said, if I'm, in, if I'm still here in the year 2000, I'm having a millennium celebration. And here we are, and it's, it's 2017, and I am one grateful bride. And I wanted my, my submission to represent my, my wedding gown in some way. So I used fabric very similar within the embroidery and all the seed pearls. I, I sewed all these little seed pearls on, 
and the flowers from my bouquet, I, they were calla lilies and pink roses. Uh-huh. So I embellished it with the bouquet flowers and um, also a little butterfly on the shoulder because I felt as though whatever future I have is, is a metamorphosis and I'll be able to uh, <laughs> have another chance. Wow. That's some story. Thanks for sharing it, Roseanne. Thank you. So how does someone get involved in the Creative Cups event? They, they, well, they hear this story and it rings true to them in some way, shape, or form, and they're inspired. What do they do? Gee, I, I, th- I know every other year on the odd year, the actual auction takes place, but all, all of the aspects of this event, whether it be submission or sponsoring it or attending the gala, uh, if, you, if they go to the website, creativecups.adelphi.edu, Anything they want to do, whether they want to come, submit to the program, or um, sponsor the program, that would be the best place to find all that information. Roseanne, you want to give that again? The address? Uh, mm-hmm. Oh, you mean the website? Right, yes. Right, right, right. creativecups.adelphi.edu. Great. Now, this money's being raised for the Adelphi Breast Cancer Hotline and Support Program. Hillary, tell us about the program. The program has been around for 37 years and started when we had one support group for women who had undergone a mastectomy. And that was back in 1980 when no one talked about cancer publicly. And the women in the group got such help from each other that they wanted to reach out to other women. So they came up with the concept of a hotline, and we called it the Woman to Woman Hotline because you didn't talk about cancer publicly. Um, Through the years, we've expanded our hotline, and we now cover all of New York State. We get calls from Buffalo and Rochester and and, and anywhere around the state, anything having to do with breast cancer. Any questions, if a woman is diagnosed, she can call. And we have about 100 volunteers who are breast cancer survivors themselves. So someone can call and speak to somebody who's been in their shoes and understands what they're going through. And, and helps them through this process. We also have many different support groups and uh, individual and family counseling and many educational programs and community outreach. Roseanne, again, you wanted to thank one of the sponsors. I just want to thank Malvern American Legion Auxiliary Unit 44 for sponsoring me in this endeavor. Oh, of course. Okay, so how will these funds um, raised by Creative Cups be used? All of the money that's raised is going to go towards our services that help women and men diagnosed with breast cancer and their family members through our hotline, support groups, uh, counseling. Um, We have one big fundraiser, and this is it, and we do it every other year, so we really rely on the support of so many people, like Dale, who has been doing this and and being our leader, and, and Roseanne, who contributes to the event by doing a bra and coming to the event and bringing friends to the event. We rely on them so much, and we're so happy that they support our program and what we do for other women. What can a volunteer do when they sign up for this? The volunteers do a number of different things. First of all, they're very specially trained and supervised by social workers. There's always social work backup at the program. And the volunteers could be on the hotline and talk to other women uh, when they're diagnosed or they have questions. Or some of them go into the community and and educate women about um, breast cancer and the importance of screening. and they may do office work. They do a lot of things. And uh, they're really the heart and soul of our program. Um, and we couldn't exist without them. So how does someone become a volunteer? If someone's interested in volunteering, and many of our volunteers have been have utilized our services. They've called the hotline. They've been in a support group. And now they're healthy and they want to give back. So anyone who's interested can call our hotline at 1-800-877-8077 and just let someone know that they want to volunteer and they'll speak to the social worker who's in charge of the program and come in and talk to her and see if, you know, it's, it, it's a good match. Mm-hmm. Okay. And we heard Roseanne's incredible story. Uh, let's talk about mammograms again. When should you get one? There's a lot of confusion and controversy, but our program has always held firm that you should go for a mammogram starting at age 40 and go every year after that. 
um, because you know you you wanted you want to protect your health, and by having a mammogram and a clinical breast exam and knowing what's normal for your body, a lot of women have a, just a, a feeling that something's not right. Mm-hmm. So you always follow your instincts and go see your doctor. But a mammogram at age 40 and every year after. However, if you have a family history, you need to talk to your doctor much earlier and decide when you should start having mammograms. That could affect the frequency, I'm sure. Uh, What if you don't have insurance, can't afford a mammogram? What are some options there? Yeah, we have a a number of programs. Our Sisters United in Health program is um, we have women who go into the community and partner with community groups particularly in underserved areas where women don't have insurance. They may not be documented, so they, they're afraid of the system. We can get them to uh, have a free mammogram. Um, there's a lot of resources. The state provides uh, free mammograms for women who can't afford them or don't have insurance. And it's so important to get those women screened. Sure. Okay, so someone's hearing this right now. What's what's a step to get in touch with you? What's the best way to do that? Again, the best thing would be to call our hotline, 1-800-877-8077. Anyone can call the hotline at 1-800-877-8077. We're operational 365 days a year from 9 a.m. to 9 p.m. Or they can go to breast dash cancer dot adelphi dot edu let's touch on the event again march 16th it's coming up and march. and the uh the need for vendors the need for participants there we we want people to come they still have time to sponsor unfortunately they don't have time to put in an entry but we really want people to come and see these incredible pieces of art so you have all the bras that you need for this we have that okay we have that. okay and this is happening where again at Adelphi University in the ballroom there. Um, and uh, you can buy your tickets. They're $50 a ticket. And you get uh, dessert, wine, food, and an incredible art exhibit. Take a look at what this program is all about and see all these amazing bras that were created. Uh, website address again? The website is breasts cancer.adelphi.edu. And there's going to be an auction going on at this event. Yeah, March 16th, the event. We have a live auction this time for the first time where we're auctioning off some of the bras. And there's going to be a silent auction of all the bras being auctioned off. We have Pat Battle from NBC who will be our host. And Matthew Swerdlow is going to be our MC. He's fabulous and he's really going to get the crowd going uh, to bid on these beautiful bras. Terrific. All right, if someone has found a lump or is it or is told that they have breast cancer, what's, what, what should they do? What's the first thing they should do? Well, I think the most important thing is to reach out, and that's what our program's all about. You don't have to go through this alone. You could talk to people who really understand what you're going through, what you need to do, uh, other breast cancer survivors and social workers who can help you through this crisis and get you healthy again. Okay. And uh, do men get breast cancer? Yeah, people don't know, but breast, uh, men can get breast cancer. The incidence is very low. It's 1%. But men do bre- get breast cancer, and they have different needs when they're diagnosed. We ran the first support group for men with breast cancer because they have lots of concerns, but they're different from women. Okay. And uh, let's get that hotline number again, too. It's one 800 877 Thank you, Hillary. Hillary, the executive director at uh, Adelphi, New York Statewide Breast Cancer, the hotline and support program. What would you say the main goal of this auction is? The goal of the auction is really to sell all of our 138 gorgeous pieces of art. That's how we'll raise the money. Um, And they're just so extraordinary. We have one called Candelabra. Um, A reconstructive surgeon did it. It's uh, Dr. Barry Douglas from Lips. And it's actually a candelabra with a candle in it. It's just magnificent. We have another from a detective, a police detective, who did a magnificent uh, bra with different shields and handcuffs. And uh, I'm just amazed at how creative people can can be. We have one that is actually has an elephant head on it. It sounds strange, but it's magnificent. <laughs> okay. And then there's, you know, a lot of it, uh, people get a lot from doing this event. 
uh, from creating the bras. We have groups of women working together, and they feel it's very therapeutic mm-hmm. to work on something. So we have a senior community where all the women were in a quilling club. Quilling is when you take pieces of paper and you make items, and they made the most beautiful flowers. Each individual flower, there are hundreds of flowers on the bra, and they put them together in this absolutely gorgeous bra. That's one of my favorite, and I'm going to bid on it. So I'm hope, <laughs> okay. hope I win it. So, uh, yeah, we're really hoping that people come just one, to have a great time because it's a very fun event, but also to go home with a beautiful piece of art. And if you don't have enough space in your home, give it to your doctor, give it to your friend, um, give it to anyone, and because uh, they really are magnificent. And this is all in the name of just spreading awareness um, and just creating the need for people to understand that this is a, you know, this is a serious thing and, and they need to get mammograms on a regular schedule. Absolutely. Okay. Breast can- cancer uh, really affects everybody. Everyone knows people with breast cancer or has a family member or a friend. We want to raise awareness and we want people to take care of their own health. Hillary, the website again. For information about the event, you can go to creativecups.adelphi.edu or call our hotline at 1-800-877-8077. And that phone number, again, of course, uh, good for anything. And the information you need for this or, or any support groups, uh, it's going to put you in that, that direction and, and help you out. Yeah, you call at any time and speak to a volunteer who's a survivor and get you the information, support, or whatever you need. Terrific. Dale, Hillary, Roseanne, good luck with the event on March 16th. I wish you success. And uh, thanks for coming this morning to uh, spread the awareness of breast Thank cancer. Thank you so much, Al. You've been plugged into Long Island on 102.3 WBAB and 106.1 BLI. 6.1 BLI. 6.1 BLI.